about a year ago, I bought this beat up old Bridgeport milling machine over on Maui. Shipped it back to the big island by barge. That's where I live. Took it apart to the last nut and bolt. Cleaned it up. Painted it. Reassembled it. I was a bit skeptical that the old one horse hop power motor was going to be adequate. The newer bridge ports all have two or three horsepower motors. So I pulled it off and replaced it with a uh, three horsepower motor that's controlled by a variable frequency drive. With a VFD, it's no longer necessary to uh, change speed using the uh, step pulleys on the J head bridge port. By the same token, there's no way to know what the uh, speed is. Hence, the uh, LCD tachometer project. The first attempt was a miserable failure. It may be worthwhile to uh, go through what went wrong to keep the next person from going down the same path. The first try was with one of these induction proximity switches. I mounted it uh, so that it faced the uh, pulley had to put on a couple of uh, pieces of metal into the pulley groove. And in order to balance it, there had to be one on each side. The pieces of metal are the things that uh, trigger the switch. The induction sensor uh, needs at least 10 volts and the Arduino that I'm using to process the uh, signal uh, has a 5 volt input. So I used a, a 10K pot just as a simple voltage divider to bring it back down to 5 volts. The first signal that I got uh, was too noisy to be any uh, good. Uh, I uh, improved the grounding a bit and that helped. Then I uh, slipped in a uh, very small capacitor and uh, that uh, helped even more. No matter what I tried, uh, as the um, spindle speed got up towards 2000 RPM, the signal would flatline. Whether or not this was an artifact of the um, capacitor charging or the induction sensor getting saturated, I don't know. It looks like the problem may lie with the uh, induction sensor itself. It has an advertised maximum capacity of 500 Hz. At 2400 RPM, that's only 40 Hz. You would think the 500 Hz capability of the sensor would be just fine. Well, it's really 80 Hz because there are two pulses per revolution. That's uh, 12.5 milliseconds per pulse. And uh, the uh, short pulse is only 10% of the uh, long pulse. That's 1.25 milliseconds, and uh, which is the equivalent of 800 hertz. So I think if my reasoning and math are correct, this explains why the thing doesn't work. Okay, can we find a sensor that will work? This uh, little IR device seemed to do the trick. It has an infrared LED, and right next to it is mounted an infrared sensor. Infrared light bounces off the uh, subject and back into the receiver, and it will produce uh, either a digital or an analog signal. I put some white paint on the uh, little metal plates that I use for the induction center just to improve the uh, infrared reflectivity. You can uh, see on the oscilloscope that it produces a nice clean signal. That uh, short pulse is uh, getting pretty small at 2200 RPM. Thing still works all the way up to 3200 RPM, which is about as high as I'm comfortable allowing the mill to go. Uh, the um, VFD will let it uh, climb to uh, probably 5000, 6000 RPM, but uh, no way am I gonna let that happen. It may seem a bit grandiose to call this uh, digital signal processing, 
but uh, in its uh, simplest form, I guess that's really what it is. It took me an embarrassingly long time to get this figured out and working smoothly, but in the end, it works. I'm using the Platform I.O. IDE. I think it's got it all over the Arduino IDE. Is The uh, RPM output is going to be uh, displayed on a uh, 16 by 2 liquid crystal uh, display with a IT, I2C backpack. The Platform I.O. has a ton of uh, liquid crystal libraries. Uh, this is just the one that I happen to pick. Um, the uh, collection points are the uh, number of points that uh, you'll collect uh, during the loop and uh, optionally put into the point array. The, um, the setup is pretty straightforward. The serial begin is in there just uh, for debugging purposes. You get into the loop, the first thing is to uh, get the time that the loop starts and then go to the collect data subroutine. Uh, it's a for loop uh, with uh, a certain number of points. In this case, uh, I chose 5,000 points. You uh, get the digital value and uh, push it up into the old value. Then you compare the current value with the previous value. If they're different, uh, that indicates a state change uh, or, or a peak. You go around the loop again and again until you've uh, uh, collected the number of uh, data points that are required. You <clears throat> return from the uh, for loop back into the loop. You uh, get the time. And now you have uh, everything you need to uh, calculate the RPM. You have the amount of time that it took to collect all of the 5,000 points. And uh, you have the number of peaks. The arithmetic is pretty straightforward. You output it to the uh, LCD, and Bob's your uncle. The proof of the pudding will be on how well it works. I used an optical tachometer to measure the um, speed of the spindle, then compared that with the output on the LCD. This is a graph of the uh, optical tachometer output against the uh, LCD output. Uh, I have no complaints about it. It looks like a little over a 1% is the maximum error all the way from 0 to 3,000 RPM. After that false start, I would rate this as a successful endeavor. I learned a few things.